Okay, we're going to try lesson two now. Um, hopefully you've gone through lesson one, you understand how the left arcade stick works, and uh, you're ready to, to take the next step in the journey understanding what all this code means when we're using the examples uh, that are built into Vexcode. Um, what this piece of code adds, builds onto what we've learned in the previous one, is what if we want to derate? What if when we push the arcade stick all the way forward and we get our 100% output, what if we don't want it to be 100%? What if it's too jumpy? So what we can do is add a multiplier on there for a D-rate. And so what we've done, uh, you can see the second line of code here says drive speed D-rate. It's a variable we've set up, and at this point it's set to 0.9. And so when you come down here to our set left motor velocity and our set right motor velocity, we're multiplying that A plus B or the A minus B positions by that D-rate. Now, pay particular attention to how the bubbles are stacked. Right? We are multiplying this inner bubble here, the A plus B, and that's essentially acting like parentheses. When we're doing our order operations in our math, this bubble uh, is parentheses. So the A plus B action is happening before we multiply by the D rate. What this does in effect is both our turning and our forward speeds are both going to be derated by whatever our D rate speed is set at. Now, we may not want that. Maybe we want full speed forward in reverse, but we maybe want to turn a little bit slower. This code's not going to do it. This code right here, with the way the bubbles are set up, is going to multiply both our forward and reverse action and our left and right action by that D-rate speed. So we'll take a quick peek on what maybe that'll look like here um, with it like this. So in this example, you'll see as we push up, our robot goes up, and you can see it kind of leans to the left a little bit. We'll talk about how to maybe correct that here at the end of the video. But everything's slow. The forward and reverse is slow. It's been derated. The left and right's been derated. Uh, so in this example, we've derated all of our motion in all directions on our, on our left joystick. So now we know how to add a derate to our left arcade stick. Uh, if we're trying to derate everything, our total forward and backward, and our left and right speed. But maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe we only want to do one of them. Uh, maybe going forward and reverse is fine, we like that full speed, that top end speed, but maybe it's turning a little bit too quickly and we're not getting the precision we want. So we want to slow down the turn only. Well, in order to do that, we have to stack our bubbles a little bit differently as we're dragging in our various operators. You can see the difference with this code it looks really similar, but this time the B position is in a multiplication bubble right here with the D rate before we add it into the A. So we're getting full power on our A as we're pushing up, but if we push left and right on, on our B side of our, of our left stick, uh, that's being D rated. So what this in effect is it allows us to slow down our turn only without slowing down our forward and reverse action. So it's really critical to understand how your bubbles are stacking up and what VexCode does to the order of operations depending on which bubbles you put in which order. So we're back to full power now. As we just push it up a little bit, it's going to go just a little bit. But now look, when we put the stick fully forward, our front wheels are popping up in the air again. It's because we now have 100% forward and backward. But when we push the stick left and right fully, we get a slow turn. So this is full speed forward and slowly derated turning. Um, because of the way we stack those bubbles up. So this is the final example kind of in this family of code uh, that we've been looking at from the beginning. Uh, this time what we've done is we've taken the steering and we've moved it off of our left stick and over to our right stick. So up and down on our left stick still goes forward and reverse, but when we go to steer, the steer is no longer on our left stick, it's now left and right motion on our right stick. Now this could be useful when you want a lot of precision in your turning. Because when you push up on a left stick, if everything's on your left stick, you push up, you may not push up perfectly straight. And you may kind of, you know, wiggle a little bit as you're driving forward. What if you when you push up, you don't want any kind of feedback from left and right. You could build that dead band way up. But a, another way of doing it is having your left stick be your up and down, so you'll go straight forward and straight backwards. And your turning all happens on your right stick. You're not going to get any kind of feedback if your thumb doesn't go straight up. Uh, and so this was useful for some teams during the squared away game when they wanted to drive in really straight lines 
during some of the thing. Now, uh, if you have your setup like this and you're still not getting a perfectly straight drive forward when you push up, um, it's probably in your robot. You probably have some drag, uh, whether in your chain or your drivetrain somewhere, maybe a tire is rubbing against uh, one of the plastic members. Um, so when you push straight up, it should go straight up, assuming everything's equal. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, it's a good chance to check your robot and figure out if there's something going on um, as far as friction being created somewhere in your design. And so now in this final example, we push up with our left stick, it goes up, and now look at our right thumb. Our right thumb is now controlling steering. And we don't have to worry about uh, whether we're pushing straight up and down uh, in order to make our robot go straight. So this is that example with the right thumb controlling the steering and the left thumb controlling our uh, forward and reverse velocity. Once again, that concludes uh, this lesson. I hope you learned something. Uh, if there's anything that you have questions about, please leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Thanks and good luck.